Hello, my name is Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about EQing sound systems. Uh, if you're a sound man for a band, or you work in a club, maybe, I don't know, if you're dealing with any kind of um, uh, live reinforcement equipment, I'm sure you run into, you know, where do, we, where do you EQ, what do you EQ, and where do you EQ it? Uh, I have a pretty straightforward approach to this, and um, the theory is that the channel EQs, are dedicated to fixing, repairing, equalizing the combination of the microphone and the instrument, or the microphone and the vocal. So if my voice sounds too boomy um, through this mic, um, we would reduce the low end on the channel, we'd EQ it on the channel. Um, if I go to a different mic and I sound too thin, uh, maybe we would, e we would EQ that on the channel. So the combination of my voice and the microphone would be or the instrument and the microphone would be repaired by EQing the channel. The speaker itself, the speakers that are in a box um, and the enclosure and the way that the speakers interact with each other, that is typically EQed by the system processor. Uh, it's generally now uh, it's uh, supplied by the manufacturer of the speaker, they'll have some sort of preset uh, in the processor, and that fixes the sound of the speaker enclosure combination, and maybe they have presets for multiple enclosures working together. Finally, you have your outboard graph or your system EQ. Your system EQ, its job is to repair or to correct the speaker system to venue uh, combination. So theoretically, if you follow that uh, line of thinking out, if you use the same mics every day, and you have the same band every day, and they set up the same backline every day, and use the same speakers every day, the only thing that would change from venue to venue would be your system EQ, because you'd be correcting for a different venue. All uh, your channel EQs would stay the same, because they're correcting for the instrument. If somebody, if the guitar player adds more low end to their guitar, you would correct for it here. If you have a boomy room, you can fix it on the, speaker, on the system EQ. And um, if there's some sort of peak in the speakers, it's done in the processor. Um, pretty, maybe pretty logical if you think of it that way. If you do uh, follow that plan, if you do correct the various equalizations in that method, theoretically, this mic with somebody's voice or an instrument coming through it, corrected by the channel EQ, and all the channel EQs fix the mic slash instrument combinations, you should be able to hook up a recording system right at the left and right before the system EQ make a recording and play it back on any quality sound system and have it sound good have it sound similar to a studio balance or a uh, it shouldn't be too bright it shouldn't be too dull it should sound correct because you've fixed that microphone instrument combination on the channel strips um, what the one way to tell that or to determine that is get a good quality pair of headphones. And I did this mighty headphone quest and some other videos, uh, YouTube videos, and uh, these are Denon D2000s. These are my favorite of the bunch. Um, Cost-wise, probably the Shure SRH 840s. They were amazing. They're uh, about half the price of these. Um, and what those, the reason I did that uh, the mighty headphone quest was specifically for this purpose, to EQ. Um, I carry these with me live everywhere I go, or a pair of 840s, and plug this into the headphone jack, put the headphones on, and EQ each of the microphone instrument combinations using the channel strips to sound correct in the headphones, in my reference. This acts as a common reference point that I bring with me everywhere. I always have the same reference point. And if I always make those instruments sound the same, regardless, or if there is a change, a different mic, a different guitar amp, if I make them sound correct here, and I plug this in and listen to CDs that I'm familiar with, and they sound correct, then my board tapes recorded off the left-right bus before the system EQ will sound correct. So now I've got this correct sound um, created off the channel EQs, and now I've taken, I'm taking this correct sound. Now the next way we've got to deal with it is now we have a system EQ to deal with. The system EQ we play a CD that we're familiar with. We EQ the system so that CD sounds correct. We may use pink noise and we bring it to flat and that gets us close or closer. You may use smart and uh, correct that so it's flat. Um, 
So now you've got some sort of way of uh, getting your system EQ so that correct music, correctly recorded CDs sound uh, proper through it, and you're EQing your microphone instrument combinations to sound correct. Then when you marry those two together and you've got your correct sound coming out of this into your correct sounding system, and assuming your speaker system has a processor or the actual yeah, system processors are EQ'd correctly, then the sound should come up sounding great. And then when you move to another room, you change your system EQ to correct for the room uh, variations. Uh, another good trick to get your uh, sound of the system EQ dialed in, you might use smart, use your various methods, is I use a comparative reference. I'll take a CD, I'll play it through the main system, I'll play it through the speakers, and I'll also plug my headphones right into the front of the CD player. And I'll put the headphones on and listen to the headphones and I'll try and match, uh, match the volume. So the main system is about the same, si same volume as the headphones. And I'll listen to the headphones and I'll listen to the mains. and Take them off and put them on. And I'll adjust the system EQ. If the headphones sound much brighter than the mains, and I know the headphones are correct, I'll dull the mains down. And you can, uh, as you become more familiar with it, you can actually get pretty good at it where you know, it's, you listen to the headphones, and you take it off, and you listen to the PA, you hear this, okay, that's a little bit too much, maybe 630, 800, or whatever, and you, you keep going back and forth until you've got a nice tonal match between your headphones, your constant reference point, and your system. And you've also used your headphones to get a good uh, sound off of your um, various instruments. If you've actually used your common reference point properly, you should be able to put those two together and have this correct sound pass completely through the system. Um, I found that this method is so effective for me that when I work in a recording truck, let's say I'm doing a live TV show, I can actually use my same EQ settings that I use for my live show on the recording truck console and get very close to the sounds that I'm looking for um, in a live festival. I'll do the same thing. I don't even need, I can actually check the entire band using my headphones and the familiar microphones. And then I'll play a CD in between bands, EQ the main PA using the CD and the headphones, make the main PA correct, check the channel inputs on the headphones, make that correct. Never hear the instruments through the main PA and when I bring them both together I can actually fire up the band and have them sound correct through the festival system without ever doing a full-blown line check or sound check with the band. Alright, uh, that should cover it for now and I'll try and do more videos soon.